the Holy Scriptures are very clear. There are the righteous and there are the sinners. There are the righteous people and there are the unrighteous people. You could say there are the good people and there are the evil people. The righteous and the wicked. Very simple concept. But unfortunately, a lot of people just don't get it. The scriptures talk about it immensely. It talks about the righteous a lot. It talks about the people of darkness versus the people of light. It talks about the children of God and it talks about the children of the devil. Yes, John chapter 8, Jesus told a whole group of people, they're not the children of God. They are the children of the devil. 1 John chapter 3 also talks about the children of the devil. So we have the righteous and we have the sinners, the children of God and the children of the devil. In Genesis chapter 6 verse 9, it says that Noah was righteous. In Genesis chapter 18 verses 23 to 28, Abraham was praying for the righteous in Sodom and Gomorrah. He was pleading with God, God, do not destroy the righteous with the wicked. God, are you going to destroy the righteous with the wicked? And God answered over and over again, no, I'm not going to destroy the righteous with the wicked. In Job chapter 1 verse 1, it says that Job was perfect and upright. In Luke chapter 1 verse 6, it says that Zechariah and Elizabeth, the parents of John the Baptist, were both righteous walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 6, the Apostle Paul says concerning the righteousness that's in the law, he is blameless. Now, those are just a few examples of the Bible talking about righteous people. In fact, the Holy Scriptures refer to the righteous people over 200 times. But here is a key verse. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 13, Jesus said, I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So the scriptures are clear. There are the righteous people and there are the sinners. Now there's this animation series called Superbook. That's put on by CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. And I just happened to run across this the other day, and I just saw a few minutes of it. In this video, they portray Jesus in an animation quoting, at least supposed to be, quoting this verse. But in Superbook, it is changed dramatically. Remember what Jesus actually said. He said, I am not come to call the righteous but the sinners to repentance. Now let's look at how Superbook put it. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. What? Jesus said, I'm not come for those who think they're righteous, but those who know they are sinners? That sounds like a very small change, but that particular clip is the embodiment of what is wrong with modern day Christian doctrine. Why didn't they just say it like it is? Why did they have to change it? They changed it because that verse poses three great problems to the modern Christian narrative. Number one, the modern Christian narrative quotes Paul and says, there are none righteous. There's absolutely nobody that's righteous. Even the babies that are born are somehow criminals. Now, that's what the modern Christian narrative says. There are none righteous. Let's look at that. Romans chapter 3, verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Obviously, the Apostle Paul here is quoting another scripture because he says, as it is written, there are none righteous, no, not one. What is he quoting? Well, you see, it is written in Psalm 14 and Psalm 53 that there's none good, no, not one. Let's read it. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. 
They have done abominable works. There is none that does good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. They have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good, no, not one. Notice the context here. This is talking about a specific group of people. In context, it's talking about those who do not believe in God, who say there's no God, who are corrupt, who are abominable, who do not seek God. Now, right after it says, there is none who does good. There are none that are good. There are none that are righteous. It says this, verse four, have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? In other words, those who do not do good, those who are unrighteous, it says they have no knowledge who eat up my people, who eat up my people as they eat bread. They eat up the people of God who do not call on the Lord. In other words, they do not pray for they are in great fear for God is with the generation of the righteous. Notice, even in this passage of scripture where it says there is none good, no, not one, aka there is none righteous, no, not one, it clearly defines two groups of people here, those that are unrighteous and those who are righteous. So when it says that there is none good, there is none righteous, no, not one, does that apply to everybody? Now, of course, that doesn't apply to every single human being from Adam till today. Let's look at Psalm 53. Now, as you can see, Psalm 53 verses 1 to 4 is a repeat of Psalm 14 verses 1 to 4. It says the same thing. But then someone might say, what well, says in the scriptures, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. Let's look at that. Isaiah chapter 64 Verse 6, but we are all like an unclean thing, and all of our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. But let's not forget the verse before and the verse after, as many people tend to forget. The verse before, verse 5, this is speaking to God now. You, that is God, meet him who rejoices and does righteousness, who remembers you in your ways. You are indeed angry, for we have sinned. In these ways, we continue, and we need to be saved. Notice once again, there are two groups of people here. Number one, those who do righteousness, who remember God in his ways. And number two, those who sin against God, those who need to be saved. Let's read on. Verse 6 again. We're all like an unclean thing and all of our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Verse 7. And there is no one who calls on your name. Again, these are the people who do not call upon the name of God. Not everybody. Verse 7 again. There is no one who calls on your name, who stirs himself up to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have consumed us because of our iniquities. So there are those who do righteousness and who remember God in his ways. And then there are the sinners, the ones who do not call upon God, the ones who do not pray, the ones whom God has hid his face from, the ones whom God consume because of their iniquities. So Isaiah makes it very clear when he says all of our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. He explains who the our are. They're not everybody. So let me get this straight. The scripture says that Noah was righteous, that Abraham was righteous, that there were the righteous few in Sodom and Gomorrah, that Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous, and over 200 times talking about the righteous people, and yet someone turns around and says, there's none righteous, no, not one. Do you actually think God said, he's righteous, she's righteous, they're righteous, they're righteous, there are none righteous, no, not one. They're righteous. He's righteous. She's righteous. Does that make sense? But that is what modern day Christianity, I say modern day because ancient first century Christianity does not say that. Modern day Christian doctrine tells us there's none righteous, no, not one. And that brings me to the second great problem that Matthew 9, 13 brings to modern day Christianity. That is the problem that Jesus said, I don't come for the righteous. I come for the sinners. But the modern Christian narrative is that Jesus came for everybody. 
if there were none righteous, and that if Jesus came for everybody, this would have been the perfect time for Jesus to say so. I come for everybody. But he said the exact opposite. He said, I don't come for the righteous. There are the righteous. I don't come for them. I come for the sinners. So the second great problem with Matthew 9.13 is that Jesus made it clear that he did not come for everybody. That is what he said. And the third great problem that modern day Christian doctrine has with Matthew 9.13 is that it talks about the importance of repentance. Jesus didn't say, well, I don't come for the righteous, I come for the sinners so that I could preach the gospel, the modern day Christian gospel, where all you got to do is just accept me into your heart and to say this. He didn't say that. He said, I don't come for the righteous. I came for the sinners to call them to repentance. What's repentance? Repentance is change. Some people think that repentance is just feeling remorse or sorry or just confessing your sins. That's not repentance. Hebrews chapter 12 says that Esau sought repentance, but could not get repentance, even though he sought it with tears. There was great sorrow there. There was great remorse there. He confessed his sin, but he couldn't attain to repentance because he could not change the circumstances. Repentance means change. Jesus came to call the sinners to change, to change from being a sinner to being a saint, to change from being wicked to being righteous. He wanted to take people out of that group of sinners and put them into the group of the righteous. A lot of people don't know how repentance works. Read Ezekiel chapter 18. When you change, God doesn't see the past. If that's for the good or even for the bad. I mean, if you're a sinner and you change from being a sinner and now you're a saint, God doesn't hold the past against you because you have changed. You have repented. But if you used to be a saint, if you used to be good, but then you turned from the good ways and now you're a wicked person, God doesn't see your good ways. He sees the wickedness. That's what it says in Ezekiel chapter 18. That is the gospel. Jesus preached the gospel of repentance. It's the first thing he preached. It's the first thing all the apostles preached. It's in the first message in the, in the book of Acts. Even Paul, the apostle of grace himself, said in the book of Acts that God commands all men everywhere to repent. But there are a lot of people today, in the face of what the scriptures clearly say, they still deny it and they still cling on to their little gospel that they just isolate from the rest of scripture. Like they pull a verse from here, a passage from there, another verse from over there, and they piece it all together and they say, this is what the word of God says. And they ignore the context. They ignore the rest of scripture. It's like this. It's like they say, hey, this is a black triangle. It's black, only black. That's what they say, okay? I'm here to say, no, you know what? I'm gonna show you the big picture. It's red too. Okay? Black is just on one side. They just want you to see the one side. I'm showing you it all. It's red too. Oh, in fact, you know what? It's even pink too. And it's a peach color too. It's not just black. That's what a lot of Christians try to do. They say, oh, this is black. See, it's just black. It's, there's none righteous, no, not one, period. Just ignore what, what God said over there when, when, uh, when he said that Noah was righteous. Just ignore Luke chapter 1 verse 6 where it says that Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous. Just ignore where it says that Job was perfect and upright. Just ignore the fact that God admits that there were righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah. Just ignore that fact. It's black. There are none righteous. No, not one. All of our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. But they fail to tell you. That's only talking about one group of people. That's not talking about the big picture. There are the righteous people. Jesus said, I come not for the righteous. I come for the sinners to call them to repentance. Not everybody are sinners. Not everybody, of course, are righteous. So when Jesus said, I come for the sinners to call them to repentance, that makes a lot of people uncomfortable because you don't hear too much about repentance in church anymore, do you? So the modern Christian narrative the modern-day corrupt Christian doctrine says 
There are none righteous. Only those who think they're righteous. Everybody are sinners. Everybody, everybody are sinners. And they all need Jesus. Jesus came for everybody. So the modern day corrupt Christian doctrine says, there is none as righteous. Not one. Therefore, there are only those who think they're righteous. Everybody are sinners. They just need to know they're sinners. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Really? You really think that? That's the reason why Superbook changed what Jesus said. That's the reason why they intentionally corrupted the words of Jesus. Because that doesn't fit well with their corrupt Christian doctrine. Until next time, as always, seek God. We talked about people who don't seek God. We need to seek God. Don't be like those people whose righteousnesses are like filthy rags. Don't be like that group of people where it says there are none righteous, no, not one. You know, the group of people that don't seek God, that don't believe in God. Rather, believe and pray. Seek his face. And he said, if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.